In this video we're going to look at the distribution function called the normal or Gaussian distribution function and then we're also going to look at what a standard normal random variable is equal to. For the normal distribution function, again we're talking about continuous random variables here, it, the density function for a Gaussian random variable is defined as has two parameters, sigma and mu. We have in front 1 over the square root of 2 pi and then times sigma. Sigma is not under the square root sign. And then raised to the exponential e, I've written it as a function exp, e raised to the minus x squared minus mu squared all over 2 sigma squared. And so this is all in the exponent, this whole thing. The e raised to this, all of this. This is the definition of our density function and it is equal, we can write it as a, a function called n where we've got two parameters mu and sigma squared. It turns out that the mean of this density function is equal to mu and its variance is equal to sigma squared. And so really all we need for this function, if you'll notice that the only parameters up here are mu and sigma squared. So by knowing those two parameters we know what our density function is. If we know that it's a normal distribution function. All right, now the <clears throat> cumulative distribution function for this, of course, is just by definition the integral from minus infinity to x of our density function. So we'll integrate this function from minus infinity to x, and we just plug in the function here. We'll have to use a different variable again because we've got x in our limit and so we'll plug in, we'll use t in this case as our integrating variable and we would integrate this function. Now unfortunately there's no closed form solution for this. We cannot solve this integral. We can't get a, a solution. So how do we then figure out what these values are? The way we'll end up doing this is by using a table and we'll talk about this in a, in a different video on how to use a standard normal random variable to do our probability calculations. But we have to look up the values in a table or use some type of program that will do the calculations for us. And it doesn't actually solve the integral, it just does it numerically. So let's look at the Gaussian random variable. I've, or some plots of it, I set this, the standard deviation, sigma, equal to 2 in this case, and I varied the mean. and the red one has a mean of minus 3 and you can see that it has a peak. We have 0, minus 2, minus 4. So 0 is here, minus 2, minus 4. So it's right there at minus 3. So it's a what we call a bell curve. This is what we what you may have heard of as a bell curve. This is a our typical bell curve and it has a peak right at minus 3. Notice that it's symmetric it is exactly symmetric on either side of the mean and it does peak at that that mean value. For the mean equal to zero we just moves over here to where we have zero x is equal to zero and then the blue is x or the mean is equal to three and so you can see the mean just shifts this function right or left depending on what that mean value is equal to. Now let's change the variance and see what happens in this case I set the mean equal to zero and I change the variance to three different values. The first one in red, the tallest one, is the variance is equal to 0.25. And what I want to point out with this one is that as you know with a small variance it gets, it gets very narrow and because it gets very narrow it gets very tall. And notice that in this case you may not be able to see it but it's equal to 1.6 the peak here is around 1.6 and notice that the the value is actually greater than zero for our continuous random variables we can have our density function can actually be greater than zero and so here's a good example that the function actually gets bigger than zero if we integrate this function from minus infinity to infinity we'll get one of course because that's what we have to get to have a valid density function but at points it could be greater than 1. 
For the variance, or the sorry, the standard deviation equal to 0.5, we have this green one, and notice that it gets a little bit broader and extends out, and because it's broader, it ends up being shorter. The peak comes down. And then finally, the last one I plotted, the blue one, is with the standard deviation equal to 1, and it gets even broader and shorter. So it just widens that function and makes it shorter. All right, so that's what happens when we change the, the standard deviation for that normal distribution function. Let's introduce now something called the standard random variable. Uh, we'll define it for in general, and then we'll look at the standard normal random variable, and then we'll maybe do some plots with it, um, or do a plot with it. And then in a different video, we'll see how we can use it to do some probability calculations. So we're just going to introduce it in this video and then use it in a different video. So the standard random variable, let's suppose we have a random variable x and it has the mean mu x and the variance sigma x squared. We are going to define a different random variable, we'll call it z. That'll be equal to x minus the mean and then divide all of that by the standard deviation, sigma sub x. When we do this, well, let's look at two things here. We, we subtract the mean from our random variable, and when we do that, it causes the mean of z to be equal to zero. So the mean of z will be equal to zero. Uh, so you can think of if we had a mean of, if x had a mean of two, and then we always subtracted two from x, then that would cause that mean to go to zero. So we're shifting it by however much the mean is. So that causes it to be equal to zero, the mean to be equal to zero. When we divide by the standard deviation, what that does is it makes the variance of z be equal to one. And so um, that actually changes that variance so that it is equal to one. So this is what we call the standard normal, or the, uh, sorry, the standard random variable. It has a mean of zero and a variance of one. All right, so let's look at a standard normal random variable. If we have a random variable x and it is normal with the mean mu sub x and the variance sigma sub x squared, and we make a standard normal, or uh, sorry, a standard random variable from x, we, we're not going to show it here, but it turns out that it's still a normal random variable. So it still has a Gaussian shape, and its mean will be equal to 0, and its variance will be equal to 1. So we can just write it as n, 0, 1. So it uh, just has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1, and it's still a Gaussian function. The reference that, that I've been using defines a new function called phi of z as the the density function for our standard normal random variable and all it is is our density function for our normal random variable by setting the mean equal to zero and the variance equal to one so notice that we have instead of having like x minus mu squared up here we just have the variable squared z squared on the bottom we had in the density function 2 times sigma squared. Since sigma is equal to 1, it's just 2 on the bottom here. So we have the exponential e raised to the minus z squared over 2. And then in out front, we just have 1 over the square root of 2 pi. So that's the density function for our normal random variable, our standard normal random variable. All right, so I did a plot of that standard normal random variable with a mean of 0 and the variance of 1. This is what it looks like. It goes up to about 0.4 and most of it is non-zero from minus 3 to 3. So let's look at some of the lines that I've written on here. I, I drew lines down at minus 1, minus 2, I didn't draw one here but out of minus 3 and again at 1, 2, and 3. If we take the area under the curve between 0 and 1. So this area under the curve here, if we integrate that, we'll end up with 34.1% or 0.341. Since this function is symmetric, 
integrating from minus 1 to 0 notice how it's symmetric that'll be exactly the same value 43.1 percent so the area under the curve here from minus 1 to 0 is 43.1 now if I integrated from minus 2 to minus 1 just this part here we end up with 13.6 and then from minus 3 to minus 2 we get 2.15 and because this thing is symmetric you can see that we have the symmetric values 13.6 13.6, 2.15, and 2.15. Now if we integrate over a range from the mean going plus, sorry, minus, plus or minus sigma, remember in this case sigma is equal to 1, plus or minus sigma, if we integrate that, that, val that range, we'll end up with 68.2%. If we integrate plus or minus 2%, we're going from, in this case, minus 2 to minus, or minus 2 to 2, we get 95.4%. And if we go 3 sigma, I didn't write that down, but going from minus 3 to 3, we get 99.7%. And so there's 99.7% of the area under the curve is between plus and minus 3 sigma or a six sigma range one two three four five six and if you're in if you know anything about quality control you know there's some um, quality control methods that they use that they call six sigma and that's what they're talking about is is a range like that now this is our standard normal random variable but if we had any other random vari normal random variable and we went plus or minus one, uh, plus or minus sigma from its mean we would get 68.2 percent or plus or minus 2 sigma from its mean we would get 95.4 percent so the based on the mean and the variance those values all stay the same for any mean and any variance as long as we're you know as long as we have a normal random variable we integrate over those range all right, so in a, different random, in a different video, we're going to look at how do we use this normal random variable to calculate, or sorry, the standard normal random variable to calculate probabilities of a general normal random variable.